this documentary, I try to answer one main question. What are the effects on the sea life after the decrease in coral reefs? To help me answer this, I have some questions that I will be answering. First, here is some background. Coral reefs only grow in warm tropical waters. They are home to about 25% of the ocean's sea life. They provide food and shelter for small and large fish. Coral reefs are a close relative to jellyfish, so they are considered animals. This is because polyps are tiny animals which build up on each other to create a rock-like surface. It takes hundreds of years to form a big piece of coral. Scientists believe the Great Barrier Reef started forming 30 million years ago. This is the largest known reef. People say coral reefs are underwater jungles. There is a big problem though. As humans create new things and technology, it creates lots of threats. For example, ocean pollution, coastal development, so sewage destruction, um, destructive fishing, and bleaching. Bleaching is where the water stays too warm for a long time. This makes the algae, the algae in the coral die. Algae gives coral the color. They then turn white when they die. In bad cases, the coral can die. This is probably the biggest problem. Another big problem, though, is ocean acidification. As more carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere, seawater takes in the excess carbon dioxide. This makes the water more acidic. Reefs are very important in different ways. There are, they are a nursery to small fish, they protect shorelines, controls erosion, acts as a filter, catches nutrients, is a source of medication, and acts like a buffer between land and sea. Many of the coral reefs are gone. Scientists say about 75% of the reefs are in danger, though the last bleaching event was in the 1980s to 1900s. Most reefs are being killed in Australia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. 90% of the Great Barrier Reef has been bleached. Over the past 40 years, nearly half of the sea life's population has decreased. Jellyfish are having their eggs eaten almost every time they get laid. There are many fish in the sea, but I'm going to be talking about the Great Barracuda, a predator and the parrotfish, a helper. The Great Barracuda often spends its juvenile stages in mangroves where its, mol where its molted pattern conceals itself among the mangroves. As an adolescent, it prowls in the seagrass. Then, as an adult, it stays in open water as a predator. The parrotfish is a colourful fish that has a beak to eat coral. At night, they create a mucus cocoon around itself so that no predator can smell it. These fish also start as a female and grow into a male. Stingrays have enough electricity to kill a horse. They don't necessarily use their stinger much. They, um, they're fine to swim with, um, but they only use their stinger when they are being attacked. Here is a video of some stingrays swimming around peacefully. They, they pretty much glide across the surface, as you can see from this video. It's pretty interesting to watch them. Some are brown, some are black, and they pretty much feel like mushrooms. some bad fish though that invade reefs. For example, the crown of thorn starfish eats polyps by extruding its stomach over the coral and digesting them externally. These can eat coral really quickly. Lionfish herd small into a lionfish herd small fish into a corner and suck them up. These fish invade because ships pick up water to weigh up the boat 
then dump it out at their destination. Usually they pick up fish by accident. There is something called super coral, which has survived through bleaching events, so scientists want to get unhealthy coral and stress them out with warm water. They then flip it onto more coral to go to grow. The coral will then be used to the heat. Thank you. If you want to watch more about different types of corals and some facts about them, then you should stay tuned because uh, a short video will come up in a few seconds. So there are three types of reefs. Um, so the first one is a fringe reef. They grow close to the shore and um, they are ones that you can snorkel off the beach with. The second reef is the barrier reef. A barrier reef is a reef much further out and it is separated by a channel. So usually you can go scuba diving in barrier reefs. And the third one is an atoll reef. An atoll reef is a ring or part of a ring of coral surrounding a lagoon. These are usually part from volcanoes. Um, there are two types of corals, or there are more, but the two ones that most people know are the soft coral and the hard coral. Both these corals um, are very different. Like the soft corals, they sway back and forth, they're pretty soft. And the hard corals, they're basically like a rock, but they're living. Because rocks aren't living, but soft corals are things like sea fans and a hard coral is something like brain coral. Another type of coral is the red coral. It's really precious. The durable outer skeleton of red coral is as precious as gemstone. So many people try to find these corals and they use them for necklaces and all different types of things. Rings. As I just said, reefs, everyone really likes them and it's like that but fishermen they're always fishing in coral reefs and in some places like Jamaica it's getting really bad because um, they're, they've fished all the fish away um, so they've eaten them all and there's basically no fish left this is also a big problem they use dynamite to fish and cyanide. Cyanide is where they stun the fish with a chemical which brings them to the surface which then they can catch. Um, and dynamite fishing is kind of the same but they throw dynamite in the water, it's pretty self-explanatory, and they kill all the fish which then float to the top. Dynamite fishing is really bad for the coral though because it basically smashes the coral as you would have imagined. Um, and yeah, people are trying to create conservations, um, but it's pretty hard because most because dynamite fishing is illegal, but people still do it. Overall, um, in the end, we need to help save coral reefs. They're natural to the environment, and they act as a buffer between land and sea. They also provide food, shelter, um, and other things for large and small fish. We need to save these because they're natural to the environment and there are too many threats going on right now. We need to try and save them. One person can help. Now that you've watched my documentary, you can take a quiz. All of the answers you'll find in my video um, or documentary, so you can watch this back and listen carefully. Um, but to get you more interested into the quiz, if you win, if you get every question right, um, you will have the chance to enter my raffle. You just have to see how many liters of water are in um, a jug or anything like that. And the closest person to it that gets it, or whoever gets the right answer, they get to win um, a free scoop of ice cream from uh, All Good Things. So just again, you just need to um, do, do my quiz, get every question right, uh, and publish it, and I'll be able to see your response and see how well you did. Thank you. I have also shared this quiz with you 
in Google Drive. It's called, I th I'm pretty sure, Coral Reefs Raffle Quiz um, link. You just click on that, then there's a link, and it'll take you right to the quiz site.